credit cards, and don't pay attention very much. Uh, a lot of the attacks come from the developing world because, you know, they, because the computer crime laws aren't as sophisticated as they are in the U.S. or Europe or, or, or Japan. Uh, you know, I think we're all vulnerable, and I don't think there are a lot of national boundaries. The Internet, I mean, one of the things the Internet does is it breaks down boundaries. We're all in it together. So I, don't, I wouldn't say that the developing world is more vulnerable. I think the developing world is, uh, is more likely to use the open source alternatives, which is going to make them more secure. I mean, and sometimes you see that in, in things like telephony. The developing world can leapfrog what the United States or Europe, all the infrastructure we've put in place, a lot of it legacy, a lot of it insecure, and go to the new stuff. And, and in doing that, they actually get more security. You, know, you see lots of examples of, of countries doing major buys uh, of open source, major installations. And I think that's a good thing. I, I think they're bypassing a lot of legacy that we in the U.S. are really stuck with. I want to quickly uh, touch on a side note here. And again, many end users talk about it. It's spam. Um, is spam a security problem? Is it merely uh, the proliferation of email addresses to the wrong people? How does one A, combat spam and get rid of it forever? Is it possible? Well, you probably can't get rid of it forever. The way, there are lots of products that combat spam. I use a service called Postini. There are others. And what Postini does is it goes through my mail and cleans out the spam. I love it. I get two spams a week. Uh, there are internet appliances you can buy. You can plug into your network to clean out the spam. Uh, there's end user software you can buy that will go through your mailbox and clean out the spam. And there are things like Postini, which are other networks, which filter your mail before you get it. So the spam problem, I think, is being dealt with. Uh, it's a reliability problem. It's an availability problem. It's a time-wasting problem. And it's a security problem when spam is malicious, when it entices people to fall for uh, phishing attacks, to give away their usernames and passwords. So it's often a vector for other crimes. Uh, spam is an enormous problem, which is why you're seeing so many companies trying to solve it. But I think the companies are doing a good job. You know, if you are an individual and you're using a large ISP, they have spam filters. Whether it's AOL or MSN or Earthlink, they will offer you spam filters, and they work really well. If you are a corporation, there are corporate solutions. You have to pay for it, unfortunately, but it's worth it. I mean, your workers are spending, you know, half an hour a day cleaning out spam. That's time they're wasting. So spam is a big problem, but there are solutions now, and I think that's a good thing. Security and the future. How do you foresee the world from the real world security side all the way through the computer side of the next three years? I think there's going to be a lot of uh, security problems and a lot of security overreactions. We saw that with September 11th. I mean, there was a huge overreaction in the United States to security because of that one event. And I think we are vulnerable to, to panic, to hysteria. And what we need are reasoned reactions to security that deal with the threats as they are, not as we fear they are. And what I think is going to happen in the next few years are more overreactions both in the real world and in the computer world. And, and I think that would be a mistake, and I think it will hurt us all. Thank you once again for appearing uh, on Go Open, and uh, you will hear from us soon. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.